Okay, so to demonstrate the theories we were just talking about in our discussion in an actual application, I mentioned that I was going to use my uh, uh, Canada Summer Games example, but I just thought it was a bit too big and bulky and complex for a first example. So oh, I'm going to use a simple movies example. Who doesn't like going to the movies, right? <laughs> so anyway, this script is up there. By the way, the Canada Summer Games one is up there as well. So, so if you're looking for more and more examples of writing stored procedures and so on, there's lots and lots of them here, right? So I've got this one downloaded, and I have it open here. I just ran it in SQL Server, right? So just have a quick look. At what do we have as a result? Well, I just have the two tables, okay? Basically, movies is basically the title, year produced. That's, uh, it's a character for char and char four, but... Uh, you know, it's going to be like 1999, 2004, things like that, right? Review stars, that's, the idea is it's a number from one to five, basically, right? How many stars is this movie rated type of thing? Now, rating is more uh, like the actual uh, PG, PG-13 restricted, that kind of rating. So that's in a separate table. It's a lookup value, right? And we do have a row version here for concurrency control as well, right? Rating is very, very simple. It's just the... Uh, ID and the movie rating. Uh, there's a row version, but uh, we won't really be modifying that table. We're just going to focus on the movies table anyway. So we did make a view. If I right click here, I can uh, script it as a create. That's one way to get it up on the screen so we can see the SQL in here. Right, so basically, I have the inner join between movie and rating just so I can pull in, in addition to the actual rating ID, the foreign key inside the movie table, I want to be able to eagerly load. That's a term, believe it or not. I didn't make it up. Eager loading is where we often supply data that we anticipate using to save a second round trip back to the database to go and get it, right? It's very important uh, to make the user interface user friendly. So we want to show things like the actual rating, right? We don't want to show the <coughs> one, two, three, four of the ID for it, right? Now, somewhat controversially, I also have a summary property in here. Uh, we could always just build that in the class, in the UI itself, right? We could just take, add a property, a read-only property in the class, and then actually have it produce that, reduce the amount of data coming from the database. But, you know, it's not much in this case, so I'm going to leave this alone and just take all the data coming from the view as it is. Everything else, one of the rule of thumb for creating these views that are going to be used in the UI is make sure you include every field in the actual table you're going to be updating and inserting to, right? You can't leave anything out or you won't be able to set up your user interface to be able to maintain that data. You can add extra stuff, but don't leave anything out, right? That's basically it. Then we have all our stored procedures, you know, all the expected ones, select all, etc. Maybe I'll have a quick look at select by X. I can just click modify here, actually. That brings it up as an alter. So I'm set up here for uh, just the title, year, and the rating ID, that foreign key. Okay, it's, these are just characters matching the size of the actual fields. Right, so handling null in case null is passed for either of these parameters, just make sure we use an empty string instead to avoid null issues. Right, And then the rest of it is just down in the where clause. Again, we've done this before. I won't spend a lot of time, but the key thing is each of these logical call it a clause, is separated with the keyword and, right? That allows us to combine the logic in each separate one. And each one has a way to basically nullify it, right? That's why it's a dynamic filter. In other words, for this rating ID parameter, if I pass zero, which will never exist, zero would never exist for an integer identity in the actual database, then this flag, this will always be true. So it doesn't matter whether this matches or not. As long as that's true with an or in between, if either one is true, the whole thing is true, right? We've talked about it before, but I anyway, decided to go through that again. So title and year, we're just looking for contains, any characters contained inside, right? You could get fancier if you wanted to for the year, you know, make sure that it's letter and numbers they type and so on. But, you know, if they type gobbledygook, it's just not going to match anything, right? So that's up to them. And that's basically it for the database. So that's up there. Lots of examples for you as you're working on Lab 4. And if you had any trouble with that, you can look at that. All right, so let's get to actually building uh, the uh, rest of the application then. I'll get Visual Studio up here. I'm going to start with a new project. <coughs> and just for variety, we demonstrated in our last demo 
you can create two totally separate projects, one for the class library and one for the UI, right? That way you can compile the class library, just reference the DLL from the UI, and away you go. However, I'm going to show you a slight variation on that approach. We're going to have both projects in the same solution today, right? So I can come up here. I'll start with UWP. Let it search and filter for me. There we go. So I want the class library universal windows. Okay, make sure it's a universal windows one with C sharp. I'll click next. So I will call this uh, my simple movie movie library. Okay, as you know, I hate using that repo, so I'm going to go to the root of the C drive, make a new folder, call it my work. I'm going to put the solution there. Now, in terms of the solution name, uh, maybe just call it simple movie, right? That's fine. Click create. It'll put underscores inside that where it needs to in, in the actual project. Okay, so there it is, my basic class library. Oh, I gotta sign my life away. Give me a second here, I gotta use my phone and everything. Okay, so I'm logged in now. I can just delete this class, I don't need it, right? I'm gonna be organizing my class. So I might as well start off right away. I'm gonna add folders. So I'll add a folder for, you guessed it, models. And I'll add a folder or data. I'll put my repositories in there. So before I forget though, we're going to need Dapper, right? So I'm going to show two different ways of installing Dapper today. I'm going to just use the package manager console the first time here because I only have one project, right? So there's no confusion really. Yeah. Yes, I did. Thank you. <laughs> it's all package. Dapper. Oh. You know what? For some reason, if I use a small letter D, it actually shows that way, in, and I like the capital letter D. So anyway, there we go. So I see it up here in resources, Dapper. Now I'm good. All right. So now to get to some models, some classes, right? First of all, I'm just going to add my basic lookup one. sort of generic lookup class that I can reuse for all my different foreign keys that I want to show in drop-down list. Let me make this font a little bigger. Just with ID and display text, right? That matches all of my list style stored procedures in the actual database. All right, now I'm going to want another class as well. Right click, add one for movie, right? Okay, now, before I, oh, I'm going to do this once more, just for fun. If I just start a new query window here, using my simple movie, we know I can go select uh, star from, now remember, use my view, right? V, W, or is it just V, movie. Gosh, you really have to spell things right and everything? Okay, now we know that will give me all the data there. That's fine. But I want it for JSON. Auto. That gives me my JSON string. Again, we've talked about this before. Doing star is okay because I only have a few records in here. If it was a database in the real world with hundreds or thousands, you'd probably say top five or top ten, right? I can copy this. Come back to Visual Studio. And in here, I can under edit... I find pay special. Jason as classes, right? And then that gets me a head start, okay, on all the properties I need. Now, of course, this will actually be movie, okay? One thing not contained in the Jason itself is the name for the actual root object, right? So it's my movie. And, uh, you know, always be careful because it makes the best guess. It looks at the data you've given in that Jason string and it guesses at a data type, but it's not always right, right? Uh, summary, title, year produced, yeah, that's all okay. The rating ID, it, yeah, it's an int, 
I can live with an int. I don't need to change that. The only thing is the row version. I'll tell you right now, we'll talk more about that next term. But the best way to store a row version value, because it's this big, long, gobbledygook, GUID type thing. Uh, well, it's not a GUID, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but it's a big, long, gobbledygook thing, is a byte array. Okay. Row versions typically are stored in byte arrays, an array of in a byte. So it's an alphanumeric character representing a digital value. And so with an array of them, it's a very efficient way to store a great big huge number that is generated for the timestamp or row version. Okay, so I, now I have my two models in my models class. Carrying on, I'm gonna start worrying about my data now. So I'm gonna add, select add class. I'll start with the interface here for my rating repository. So the capital letter I is the naming convention for interfaces as the first letter, right? So it's my I rating repository. And to save time, I'll just replace it with the code I intend to have here. Now, we are not going to maintain at this stage the actual ratings, right? We're just focused on maintaining movies. So this is just the lookup value for the foreign key. So all I need in terms of the capability I'm defining for the repository is to go and get me the ratings. They will be of type lookup, that's the ob object or the class itself for this collection, right? I have task here because I plan on doing it asynchronously. All right, now I'll add the actual repository. So it's same as I repository without the letter I, <laughs> just rating repository, okay? And I think there's probably the most value in me just putting the code in place. And we can just talk it through. So it's similar to what we've done before, right? I'm going to use the constructor so I can pass the connection string. Remember, the library never actually has the connection string. We tell the library whenever we want to ask it to do work for us, here is the database to connect to. So we pass that to the library itself. So it's going to come in here as a parameter. I'm going to store it internally as a little private string here, right? And that makes it available throughout the application or throughout the repository itself. So I've tried to add some good summary comments. I encourage you to get in the habit of using summary comments on your classes. They actually show up in IntelliSense, right? So if you instantiate an object based on this class and you go to, you know, create one like a dot whatever, right? So it's a rating repository dot, right? and then you're gonna call a method or anything like that, it'll actually come up and show you this right in the IntelliSense in Visual Studio, okay? All this information you put in here for what it returns, everything else, right? So it's very useful to put the summary comments in. But looking down here, okay, uh, I see query async is, I got an underline, that's only because we haven't added the actual using to this class file for Dapper. But Visual Studio is there to say, uh-uh-uh, you forgot something and it helps me get it in place. So I can see that it's right there using Dapper now. Okay, so this is a nice simple one. Again, our using, so we just dispose of the connection as soon as possible. We have prepare our empty collection of lookup objects called ratings. We query async once we open the connection, calling our stored procedure, we get the data back, and that's what we return, right? Down here, return the ratings. So pretty straightforward, nice and simple one. Let's get to, the, get to the more interesting movie itself. So, although I'm gonna make sure I do a interface first. Now the truth is, I can skip the interface, right? But it's best practice. Always program against the interface in a situation like this. Uh, the uh, value is multiple. One thing that really helps make sure your code, you don't introduce errors because right? if so, you do something in there that now you no longer implement the rules of the interface, so you'll get warned right away. Plus, later on, we can dynamically even switch what repository we're using. So you might have one repository to set up to work with SQL Server, another one to work with a different database, and you might on the fly be able to switch back and forth between them, right? As long as they both satisfy the same interface. Okay, all right, so... A little bit more functionality here, get movies, that's pretty obvious, a collection of movies, get one movie or just get movie, indicated by the ID, that's the parameter we'll pass. Get movies by X, this is set up for my stored procedure, my dynamic filter one, 
it's going to look for three parameters, the title, the year, and the rating ID, right? Movie to add, update, and delete. Emphasis again on a single movie at a time. Notice it returns an integer. That's the number of rows affected, right, in each case. So that's the basic uh, repository, sorry, interface definition for the repository, the capabilities I want to have. Now, using SQL Server and our stored procedure, this is how we will actually do it, right? So I'll make my class here my movie repository class, okay? And I'm going to make it a public class. It's going to implement my interface. Now, I could do the old, you know, tell it to implement, but it just makes a whole bunch of not implemented. So I think it's more productive use of our time if I just get my code in place and we'll walk through it together. Oh, boo-boo. <laughs> uh, I copied and pasted too much or too little there? Let me just check what I have here. Ah, yes, I was missing this, so I just want to select that. Ah! No. We'll see. Okay, I think I have my copy paste correct now. I'll just do a quick build to make sure. And we succeeded. Good. So I might have been missing a curly brace there. All right. So again, our connection string at the top. Get all movies. Well, this is very much the same, right? All we need is uh, the name of the stored procedure, that it's a stored procedure, and it's going to get my I enumerable collection of movie objects, which I'm going to call simply movies, right? Not much difference here, except we passed in the integer, the ID. So here, I'm just newing up an ID, an integer object here, passing the ID, right? I'm not going to bother, there's only the one parameter, I'm not going to bother creating a dynamic parameter collection, right? This is all I have to do is pass it the ID, and that's the only difference there. I'm stretching it a bit here, but I'm going to get away with it. Okay, I'll make a new object here containing title, year, and rating ID, the three parameters that I need. And I can, that's another short form. I can get away with that. This one object has all three parameters, values in it that I pass in here as separate, a string for year, a string for title, and my integer for rating ID. And that, of course, goes to my select by X, right? So I'm trying to show you a variety of things that all work. For the rest, we're going to have to use dynamic parameters, right? So now we come down to our actual actions, okay? So insert a new movie. Our parameter is the movie to add, and it returns the number of rows affected, zero or one, right? Okay, so here we'll make our dynamic parameters, right? Now here the ID is marked as parameter direction output, right? We have our title, year produced, review stars, and rating ID, okay? So we execute asynchronously, calling the name of the stored procedure, pass our parameters, and of course the command type uh, specification for stored procedure. Now here's something new, okay? How do we get that value from my dynamic parameters collection? Well, I just go to that collection, get, notice it's cast to an int, the one named at ID, right? And that will get the newly generated ID, which I'm adding back to my movie to add, but I have to be honest, I'm not actually using it for anything in the UI here. Not at this point in this particular application, but I've got it, right? And sometimes we use them, especially sometimes we're basically going to create a, a series of related objects in our application, right? So we need to know that parent ID so we can use it if we're going to insert some related child records into another table, for example, right? So there are times when it is important to have it. So I wanted to make sure you know how to get it in case you actually need it. For what we're doing here, this simple app, I don't really care <laughs> what the ID is of the movie we just added anyway, right? Okay, so I'm just passing the exception up to the UI, because okay, we'll deal with that on another day in terms of getting the kind of uh, 
exception handling we might want in here. All right. Update, the movie identified by the ID. Okay, so I'm going to pass the whole movie to update, right? And because uh, we need to not only have the ID, but the values for all the properties of the actual uh, movie itself, including, of course, our row version, right? We need to pass that. By the way, when I was doing this with uh, the students yesterday, somehow, I don't know if I deleted it accidentally or what, I didn't have the parameter for the row version. And we just got an error coming up. I set a breakpoint, came in here, and then it actually told me, oh, uh, the store procedure is looking for row version. So it actually came up in the error message in Visual Studio. I went, oh, darn. Okay, shows you the value of breakpoints. But anyway, there you go. All right, so that's, uh, that was an issue there yesterday, but I've got it fixed now. So we execute async after we open the connection. The stored procedure, we pass all the parameters in this dynamic parameter collection, and away we go. There's really nothing else to do. It works or it doesn't. If it doesn't, it'll be because it threw an exception. We'll return our affected rows. Remember, that comes right from our dapper's execute method. Okay. Then delete, as always, the simplest, right? Uh, we basically just... I only have one thing to pass, so instead of creating a whole collection, I can just pass my new object with the ID value in there, right? The ID of the one to delete, and away we go. All I care about is affected rows, and I can pass that back so that the front-end program can decide what to do if it wasn't actually deleted. And that should be good for my library, so I'll just do a final build here, make sure it builds okay. There we go. So we succeeded. So when we did our demo the other day, at this point, I just kind of put this one aside and we started a new project. But I want to show you that they can live happily together in the same solution, which is convenient sometimes, right? Because if you have to make a modification in one and, the, in, and then a modification to match it in the other, right? It's nice to have them together in the same solution. So how do I do that? Or well, maybe I should, you know, we're at 22 minutes. I'll stop and start the recording just to break up the video.